What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and it's time for Fictional OC Fights. Now this is the first episode, sort of a test run, to see how this format works. If it doesn't, we'll change it and come up with something new. But for now, let's see how this goes. So two fans have created their own original characters and posted them in the community for Fictional Fights. We'll spend a minute going over each character's story, and while I'm going over their story, all their stats, weaknesses, and feats will be displayed on the screen for you to read. Then, once we get through both characters, a fight scene will be shown, and then the results, just like a regular episode of Fictional Fights. With that said, let's meet our first two original characters. Tsumichi, created by Green Machine Connor. Tsumichi grew up in the forest with his parents, having no desire to learn about urban life and culture. But at the age of eight, a company came and sought to buy the land that Tsumichi and his parents lived on. His parents were killed after refusing to hand over the land, and Tsumichi became the company's next target. Tsumichi was then on the run, but ended up spraining his ankle trying to get away from the company. He was about to accept death when a creature known as Jinsei no Okurinchi came to protect him from the guards by wiping their memory. The creature also granted Tsumichi some special powers to protect himself. Now Tsumichi could manipulate metal in any way he wanted. He spent to the age of 13 alone honing his skills, and then set out to protect the world from disasters and greedy companies like the ones that killed his parents. He carries a wide arsenal of metal and weapons, so he always has something to manipulate. Tsumichi does his best to become the hero that would make his parents proud. Daisuke Fukihara, created by Thomas Egan. Now starting out, it seems that Daisuke had a very normal childhood. His father was a dojo master, and he grew up alongside his sister, learning martial arts so he could protect her. However, his happiness wouldn't last long. After a horrifying discovery by the Japanese government, a virus known as TX-94 wiped out almost all of humanity. This included Daisuke's sister and family. After this incident, more and more viruses began to pop out of nowhere, TX-41 being one of them. Rather than killing the victim, this new virus had strange effects on their brains. For example, on Daisuke, it amplified his immune system and pain threshold several times that of a normal human. He is immune to all earthly diseases and can take heavy damage without feeling the pain. After becoming immune to viruses and diseases, he took the disease that killed most of humanity and infused it in his weapon, a five foot long katana. Now Daisuke sets out to rescue the rest of humanity, while his mental state deteriorates from the infection from TX-94. Round one. Fight! <laughs> They may both be sword-wielding, meteor-busting, parent-avenging heroes, but their similarities are quite different. While Tsumichi and Daisuke have both destroyed meteors, the one Tsumichi destroyed was only threatening to Tokyo. Meanwhile, Daisuke's was the size of the moon. Not only that, but after Tsumichi destroyed his meteor, he went into a two-day coma to recover, while Daisuke did his casually with one hand. Tsumichi may be nearly the speed of sound, but Daisuke can deflect rapid gunfire, and he can run faster than an RPG missile. Then there's the experience factor. Daisuke has mastered five types of martial arts, while Tsumichi is still training his metal manipulation abilities. Not like they'd be useful against Daisuke anyways. Thanks to his immunity to viruses and diseases, he'd most likely be able to resist lead poisoning that he'd get from Tsumichi's silver. Daisuke's just too fast, too strong, and too tolerant of any pain Tsumichi could give him. The winner is Daisuke.